thinking this about me, I'm going to say this. Just because you're my family, and it just hit me while I was standing over there. I got saved 14 years ago today. And we are here today to talk about second chances. Garrett, would you join me up here, please? right on you it's so so Anna doesn't get mad so the people can see you it's better for all of us anyway good morning church we are here like I said we're here to celebrate second chances and I want to paint a little bit of a picture for you um, how many people know that God will put you in a corner yes. God will box you in praying that you understand that it's him doing it all right Garrett came here he had a little motivation from the court. He has to leave here and go back and get sentenced based on completing this program, which we all know is going to work out in his favor, right? That being said, Garrett was not the happiest guy when he got here. Um, to say the least, he has warmed up to the idea. But he was, his mother's been fighting cancer the entire time he's here. He's got a, a two year old boy that he hasn't seen. He's dealt with things that a lot of people might have walked away from what's going on here. Again, God boxes you in, he puts you in that corner to say, you know what? Right now, in this season, I need you here. The thing is this, what I wanna send you away with is this, all right? To borrow a phrase from Mrs. Palmer, you must embrace your process. Everybody's in a process. Chris Palmer, our pastor, got a great degree, he's still in a process. He's leading this congregation, but he's still in a process. The thing is this, the seeds were planted here. The job was begun here. The real work is out there. Embrace your process. And please, please, please hear me when I say this. You cannot do this alone. The strongest man realizes that he can't do it alone. You're not supposed to be alone. Please hear me when I say that. Thank you, Gary. privilege to be up here with you. I know uh, John took some of the stuff I wanted to say, but I want to ask the congregation one thing. Does God still save? We know he saves. We see it day in and day out. And does God still do healing miracles? You know, one thing that John mentioned was that um, Garrett's mom had incurable like brain tumor or cancer, right? And then when he was phasing up, she got a diagnosis, we got a CAT scan, and it was all gone. Is that correct? So we know that God is still in a healing business. You know, God, you thought maybe you came here because you didn't want to go to a 10-year, however long prison sentence. God saw it differently. You know, God, since he's brought you here, has helped to open your eyes. He's implanted in you his word. Now, I will say, uh, that's all fun and rosy and stuff, and that's what we hope for. But the one thing is, too, we still have to walk it out. You know, God said, I think it's in John chapter 4 or 5, he said, he healed a guy, right? And after he healed him, he said, hey, you know, you're well now. But he said, you know, go and sin no more, unless something worse happens to you. See, God has saved you from your mess. But now we ask, we charge you to continue to walk this out. You told me the other day when we was going out to lunch, you know, God has helped you with restoring your family or getting a family. He's helped you with the job, you know, and you have a good church that you're going to go to. Just remember to keep your eyes focused on him because God loves you. Now the best part, I can just read it. James Garrett Welch has successfully completed the Heartland Men's Recovery Program, a course of spiritual and personal restoration administered by Heartland Community Church and is hereby recognized for such achievement. 
Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Congratulations, my friends. on my end and it took the one to change and it took learning to submit and some grace from God and the staff uh, but ultimately for me to get here it took God so I give him all the glory he pulled me from the darkness when I didn't think it was possible I'd given up on the thought of doing anything positive in life I'd given up all hope in life period I was blinded to anything good because I didn't have God. But through his mercy and grace, he brought me to Heartland and lifted me up and showed me that I don't have to live like that anymore. And through the staff that's been here and through his word. Uh, so I just want to thank everybody. I just want to uh, thank the staff at the Men's Center, especially my group leader, JC, for pushing me to do better and be better. And uh, Miss Lori for her love and uh, for just having this place for people like me. And uh, to my family, um, they weren't able to be here, unfortunately, but they're watching. Uh, Mom, Dad, Peyton, I love you guys. And thank you for not giving up on me whenever I was hopeless and loving me, even though I definitely didn't deserve it. Thank you to Tribble for getting me out of jail. <laughs> and uh, Daniel Bach for showing me how to be a good servant. And, uh, I just have a Bible verse, and it's 1 Peter 5.10. And uh, it's, in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Jesus Christ. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. If we could get the Men's Center staff to come up and I'll pray for Garrett. Father, we come before you today in the name that is above every name, Lord, the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you that Garrett was brought during this season in his life to this place, God, to this community of hope and restoration, this community of, of uh, this uh, city of refuge, Lord, that he was able to come here for a whole year to, uh, to learn who you are. God, thank you for revealing yourself to Garrett. Thank you, Lord, for the, the change that has taken place in his life. And we just pray, Lord, as a staff and as a church, as a community, we pray over Garrett's life, and we pray that in the days ahead, all the seeds that have been planted in his life, God, that you would come in behind us, <clears throat> Lord, and that you would uh, bring those seeds to fruition, God, that they would produce good fruit in his life. God, that you would continue to pursue him by the power of your Holy Spirit, that your love and your joy that you've placed in his heart, this new revelation that he has of who you are, would grow and multiply, God, and it would flow through him into his family's life, that when they lay eyes on Garrett, they see you, Lord Jesus. They see your power, your grace, your mercy. God, I pray that in the days ahead that you would put people in, in his path, Lord, in the church that he's going to go to, the place he works, they're going to help him, Lord. They're going to help him come closer to you. They're going to push him and, and draw him closer to the relationship with you, Lord. 
I pray that your word would be central in his life, God, that all the things that he's learned here through the power of your word, through the love of this church, God, that they would not be lost, they would not be forgotten, and that he would continue to grow in grace. God, empower him, equip him, bless him with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and, and just pray again that he continues to grow to be the man of God that you created him to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.